Hello everyone, ever felt like cutting edge AI was out of reach? Low rank adaptation or LoRa is breaking down those barriers by dramatically reducing the computational resource and time needed for fine tuning. LoRa is making advanced AI customization accessible to a wider audience from individual researchers with limited resources to a smaller startup with big ideas. This democratization of AI power promises a surge of innovation from unexpected places. Want to be part of it? Let's take a look together. Let's start with a recap on modern LLM training flow. This is an image I get from my LLM training video. The training process is often split into two phases. The first phase is called pre-training and the second one is called post-training or fine-tuning. Industry and research trend is focusing more and more in post-training stage. More details you can refer to my LLM training videos. Modern models are very large with large numbers of parameters. For example, GPT-4 is reported to have around 1.8 trillion parameters, and DeepSeek V3 has 671 billion parameters. So updating model weights requires a lot of computation, and storing the model weights requires a lot of storage for a modern LLM. Here comes the million dollar questions. The primary purpose of pre-training LLM is to enable it for vast and general understanding of language and the world from massive amounts of unlabeled data, whether it's text, image, codes, videos. In this phase, it makes sense to touch all parameters in the model, since we're trying to get a generalized foundation model from scratch, either zero or random weights, depending on the initialization. However, the primary purpose of post-training is to refine and align the pre-trained model's capabilities and behavior. So do we still need to change all parameters with full rank and dimension? Second question is, what if we need to make task-specific modifications to the foundation model? Do we need to do a full retrain every time? Is this even scalable for the most wealthiest company in the world, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon? For example, if Verily needs a model with extensive medical data on top of Gemini, or YouTube Kids team needs additional safety checks on top of Gemini model. From my personal experience, I can tell you the answer is no and no. We don't need to change all parameters with full rank and dimension in a lot of cases during post-training. And it's not scalable to do full retrain every time, even if you're working in one of the wealthiest company in the world. Many of my personal project and my team's project are limited by GPU resources. And the GPU resources is very, very tight for everyone in the industry. So what can we do instead? Before we answer that question, Let's dive deeper by visualizing the training process. This is a visualization of the pre-training process. In this phase, the model's weights are empty and we pass in tons of tons of unlabeled data to fill in all the weights of the model. This is the visualization of full fine-tuning. All the weights are filled, but in this process, it's all tweakable. We are tweaking all the weights of the model. More details, you can take a look at my LLM training video. I include prompt engineering here because prompt engineering was considered a pretty promising way for different teams to build on the same foundation model. It's been proven it's not the best way, but I still want to include it here. In prompt engineering, we're using all existing weights. The weights of the model are all frozen. We're just trying to retrieve the best response from this model. More details, you can take a look at my prompt engineering video. With that said, Prompt engineering, although it's not a good way to do quality improvements on existing model, it's a pretty good way to utilize existing applications like Gemini and ChatGPT. So feel free to still use prompt engineering on those apps. After the previous cases, the apparent question is, what if we can do something in the middle? Let's say most of the weights of the model is frozen, but we can still improve and tweak the parameters that matters, that's more important than the others. Is it possible? This is the motivation of PEFT parameter efficient fine tuning. And this is a big family of techniques. And today our focus is on LoRa. LoRa stands for low rank adaptation. The original paper was published in 2021 and it's been very popular ever since because of its effectiveness and simplicity. Low rank adaptation LoRa proxies model updates Delta W. The dimension is 
d multiplied by k in the form of two low rank matrices a and b a matrix is of d multiplied by r b matrix is of dimension k multiplied by r where r is usually a lot smaller than the minimum of d and k tldr we're trying to approximate delta w with a multiplied by b matrix in this way we can significantly reduce the fine tuning time and also significantly reduce the checkpoint size the intuition of this is not all weights are equally important some are a lot more important than the others say attention layers W stands for the weight of the model, and if we can break this down into two parts, the first one is the frozen weight from the pre-training process, and we use A and B to approximate delta W, which is the delta that comes out of the post-training process. In this case, we change the problem of fine-tuning delta W, which is the same dimension of original weight W, to fine-tune A and B, which is a lot smaller than original matrix W. R is a hyperparameter. Small value will shorten the training time and storage. However, if the value is too small, it might cause information loss and hurt model quality. Empirically, R can range from 8 to 256, and it's a lot smaller than a typical D and K. This is the comparison of weight update process from full fine tuning and LoRa. In full fine tuning, you can consider the input is going through pre-trained weights and the weights update W and delta W. Both of them have the same dimension K and D. After matrix multiplication with input, we get the outputs. With LoRa, the input still goes through the frozen pre-trained weights. However, instead of going through a weight update delta W with the dimension D and K, it goes through matrix A and B, and R is the low rank inner dimension, a predefined hyperparameter that is a lot smaller than D and K. We're still doing the same at operation after input goes through pre-trained weights and A B matrix. And here is an example of why we save a lot of parameters. Let's say D is 100,000 and K is 200,000, R is 16. By the way, those values are pretty typical, so it's not something that I made out of nowhere. Without LoRa, we have 20 billion parameters, and with LoRa, it only has 4.8 million parameters. It's more than 4,000 less parameters with LoRa, so the differences are huge. This is the training details of LoRa. We need to initialize A and B first. The most common initialization strategy is for matrix A, we initialize randomly using a standard Gaussian distribution with a small standard deviation. For matrix B, we initialize it with all zeros. The intuition of this initialization is at the beginning of fine tuning, delta W should be zero to preserve the original pre-trained weights. And the random initialization of A allows for different initial directions for adaptation during training. B is zero, A is a standard normal distribution. And once A and B are initialized, there are trainable parameters in the model during the fine tuning process with LoRa. The forward pass of a layer with LoRa can be defined as this formula. H is the output, X is the input. And in the back propagation, the gradients are calculated only for the parameters in matrix A and B. The weights for W0 remains frozen. So these gradients are then used to update A and B using optimization algorithm, say Adam or SGD to do gradient descent. It's all pretty standard and surprisingly simple. LoRa comes with a lot of advantages. The first one, apparently it significantly reduced the training parameters and it results in lower computation cost, use less memory during training, allowing fine tuning on less powerful hardware, say your own personal computer. It also enables faster training times. With fewer parameters to update, the training process converges much faster. So you can fast iterate on a lot of prototypes. And it also uses a lot smaller storage footprints. The LoRa adapters are very small compared to the full model, usually between 1% and 0.001%, making them easier to store and share even for personal users like us. Also due to the frozen base model parameters and low rank A and B matrix effectively acting as a regularizer, it's really hard to overfit. LoRa usually have better or comparable quality when training dataset is limited compared with full fine tuning. The intuition is for full fine tuning to work, you need a lot more data to propagate through all the parameters in the model. But for LoRa, since the parameters are a lot less, you can do it with less data. 
Next one is task isolation. This is something really strong, I would say. Multiple small task-specific adapters can be attached to a single base LLM. These adapters can be easily loaded and swapped depending on the task without needing to store or load multiple full fine-tuned models. This enables efficient multitask learning or serving different applications with the same base model. Basically, different teams, they can work on a single base LLM focusing on different tasks without blocking each other. And you can combine your task-specific deltas for collaboration later. Let's say a team is working on dock adapter and the other one is working on toy adapter. After they are done, we can combine these two adapters and get a toy dock adapter. Pretty cool, right? For Lara cons, there's the serving latency increase. After merging with base models weights, inference latency should not increase since it's mathematical the same process. However, serving multiple checkpoints, base LLM, one or more LoRa adapter checkpoints, that could result into serving latency increase depending on the infrastructure like RPC or in-memory. Usually RPC will have more latency increase. This is a comparison between full fine-tuning, prompt engineering, and LoRa. Let's take a quick look. For quality improvements, full fine-tuning usually have the best quality. LoRa have close quality or better when the training data is limited to several thousand. Prompt engineering does not do model improvement. It's just a way to get better response. For tuning time, full fine-tuning is long. LoRa is a lot shorter within hours. Prompt engineering is very little time to run a long prompt. Tuning cost, full fine tuning use a lot more memory and chips comparing with LoRa. LoRa has lower cost. Prompt engineering have no tuning cost. Training data wise, full fine tuning requires a large number of data. LoRa requires smaller number of data. Prompt engineering requires no additional data. Model storage cost wise, full fine tuning requires large storage to save the full weights. LoRa only need to save the adapter's weight, so it's a lot smaller. Prompt engineering have no additional storage. Task isolation-wise, full fine-tuning is really hard to do that since it requires separate models for different tasks. Task-specific LoRa adapters can be easily combined, swapped, and removed. And for prompt engineering, you can just use different prompt for different tasks. Serving latency-wise, full fine-tuning and prompt engineering they don't have additional serving latency increase. LoRa could have some serving latency increase depending on the infrastructure you're using. And surf within the mobile device, for full fine tuning, it's almost impossible because the base model is too big for mobile unless you are using a distilled version, which is a popular choice nowadays. You can easily put LoRa adapters weights on device. And for prompt engineering, of course you can use it on device. So in short, if you're not looking to improve the quality of the model, prompt engineering is the way to go. Like I said, if you're just a casual user trying to get the best response from ChatGPT or Gemini, just focus on prompt engineering. However, if you are a entrepreneur or someone really interested in fine tuning open source LLMs, LoRa is something that can 10x or 100x your efficiency. It's really, really powerful and simple. LoRa adoption across industry is rapid. Since the original publication in 2021, it has been adopted across essentially all customer surface, like open source LLMs, fine tuning, applications, cloud tuning, on device, as you can see, the Google Scholar results for search term LoRa, it's exploding. I don't have the data for 2025 because it's just April. LoRa is not only used for fine tuning, it's also used in reinforcement learning. For example, reinforcement learning with human feedback can use LoRa for both rewards modeling and policy optimization, achieving comparable performance to full fine tuning with significantly reduced computation cost. More commonly, this is being referred as Perl, parameter efficient reinforcement learning. And different LoRa adapters can be trained for different RL tasks or environments using the same pre trained backbone. I want to briefly talk about QLoRa, which is the quantized low rank adaptation. Quantization, I've talked about this in DeepSeq v3 video. It reduces the number of bits used to represent model weights, it will significantly decrease the memory usage. And since LoRa use a frozen weight for base model, an intuitive optimization for LoRa will be to do quantization on the frozen weights. 
So the pre-trained LLMs weight are frozen after being quantized to 4-bit normal float. In this case, model will be in a very memory efficient state. And then we do the LoRa integration. Low rank adapters are added to the chosen layer of the frozen quantized model. These adapters introduce a small number of trainable high precision parameters. Same concept of LoRa that I have gone through. Next, we go to fine tuning. Same with LoRa, only the weights of the low rank adapters are updated. The quantized base model remains frozen. In doing inference, we can either use the A and B matrix directly and add it up against the original quantized weights, or we can dequantize the original weights W0 back to a higher precision and then add the adapter updates. This is a comparison between LoRa and QLoRa. As you can see, QLoRa used quantization and it has 75% smaller peak GPU memory usage and it can support 10x batch sizes due to lower memory footprint. However, this comes with a price. On training speed wise, Aura is generally faster because it doesn't have the quantization and dequantization steps. And it's also simpler to implement because QLoRa needs to implement the quantization techniques. All right, that's all I wanna talk about Lora. The last thing before I say goodbye is I want to cover some of the other popular path techniques briefly. For example, adapter tuning. TLDR adapter tuning introduces small new neural network modules called adapters into the existing architecture of the LLM. The weights of the original pre-trained LLM are frozen. Only the parameters within these newly added adapters are trained on the task-specific data. And this is the architecture. Basically, we are adding adapter neural networks into the existing transformer architecture. As you can see, this is very similar concept of LoRa. It's trying to freeze the base LLM and only update a small set of parameters. The only difference is adapter tuning is introducing new neural networks into the architecture, but LoRa is a lot simpler. That's probably why LoRa is more popular right now. The architecture is very similar to autoencoder, and if you want to know more about autoencoder, take a look at my autoencoder video. It aims to limit the number of trainable parameters, and as autoencoder, it has the down projection. It reduces the high dimension input into a low dimension space. It also has non-linearity, applying non-linear activation function like ReLU. It also has the up projection, projecting the lower dimension representation back to the original higher dimension space. It also has the residual connection. This is to improve gradient flow and address vanishing gradient by adding the output directly to the original input of that layer. Another path technique built on top of LoRa is called DORA, Weight Decomposed Slow Rank Adaptation. The motivation is researchers find full fine tuning and LoRa often shows different patterns of weight updates, particularly in terms of magnitude and direction. DORA aims to bridge the gap by allowing for more nuanced updates to both aspects of the weights, that is, magnitude and direction. The essence is it first do weight decomposition. This is the key innovation of DORA. It decomposes pre-trained weight matrices into two components, magnitude and direction. DORA then fine-tunes both of these parameters and it applies LoRa to only the directional component. This is because the directional component has a larger number of parameters, making low-rank adaptation efficient. The magnitude, less so, so we update them directly. This is a picture I get from the paper. So DORA is very interesting improvements built on top of LoRa. There are so many other path techniques that I'm not going to cover today, but I think we have covered the most popular one, which is LoRa. Hope you find my video helpful and useful. And if you like it, please subscribe, comment, and like. See you next time. Bye.